In this video, I will show you how to easily install WordPress on a Raspberry Pi 4 or Raspberry Pi 3 using Freedombox. Freedombox is a bit of software that makes it easy to set up and manage a web application like WordPress. This video will be divided into four parts. First, writing the Freedombox image to a microSD card, and then booting the Freedombox image on a Raspberry Pi, and then doing some initial setup for Freedombox, and finally installing WordPress and to start using it. So first I'm going to open a program called Raspberry Pi Imager. This is the program that we'll use to write the operating system image to the SD card. Uh, this program is available on any operating system. So go ahead and open that. And then I'll choose the device. Uh, Freedombox only currently supports Raspberry Pi 4 and Raspberry Pi 3. So if you have one of those devices, you can choose it here. And then go to choose the operating system. And I'll scroll down to find other specific purpose OS, which is here near the bottom. And then I'll scroll all the way down to the bottom of this page to find Freedom Box. And there's two versions of Freedom Box you can use testing or stable. Stable is recommended for most people to use. Um, and then I'll choose my storage device. Make sure you choose the device that matches with your SD card. And then click Next. And yes. Now this process will take a very long time to complete, but I will go ahead and speed up the video. First there will be a writing process, and then it will verify that everything was written correctly. And once that is done, you can take out the SD card from your computer and plug it into the Raspberry Pi. And make sure that you have an Ethernet cable connected between your Raspberry Pi and your home router. And then go ahead and power on the Raspberry Pi by plugging in the USB power cable. And when you first power it on, if you do have a monitor attached, you'll see this color pattern. And then there will be a large number of logs scrolling by as the system boots up. Attaching a monitor is not strictly required, but it can be useful to get some information, such as the IP address. Because we're going to use that to access the system uh, through its web interface. So after the boot up, you'll see this login screen. We're not going to type anything here. We're not going to log in here right now. But we are going to look for an IP address, which is listed. And in my case, it's this 192.168.8.235. It'll be a different value for you, but this is the value that I will use. Um, on my other computer, I will be able to access the system through a web, through a web browser. So I will open a web browser and type in that address that I saw. And it may not be available right away. You may have to wait several minutes for the web server to come up. So at first you may see this error page, but eventually uh, the web server will come up and it will be reachable. And then you'll see this warning message. This is due to a self-signed certificate. But for now, we'll have to click through and continue on. And when you do finally get to the Freedom Box interface, you may see this other message at the top that says, please wait. And Freedom Box will finish its installation steps. So you'll have to wait a few more minutes here.
And when that is finally complete, you'll see the Start Setup button at the bottom. So go ahead and click that. And then you can create your first user account for the Freedom Box. This will be an administrator who has access to the entire system. So you'll come up with a username and a password and make sure that you don't forget your password. So I like to write it down on a piece of paper. And when you are ready, you can click the Create Account button at the bottom. Next, there will be some questions about your home network setup, how it's arranged. You can either answer these now, or you can skip these questions and just come back to them later if you prefer. And then you'll see a page for frequent feature updates. I recommend to keep this enabled and click next. Software update, this is also recommended, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to skip it because it can take quite a while to complete. And then we're done. And now you can go and install apps on Freedom Box. So here you will see the list of all the apps that can be installed on Freedom Box. But we'll scroll down towards the bottom and find WordPress. And here we can start installing the WordPress app. Just click the install button at the bottom of the page. This will again take a while to complete, but I will go ahead and speed up the video. And when that is done, you'll see a message at the top that says the app was installed. And in the description of the app, you'll find this link that says admin page. So we're going to go ahead and open that in another tab. And go to that tab. And now this is the standard WordPress setup. So first we'll choose our language. And then we'll type in some information for our WordPress site. So it has a title, username and password. Um, this username and password is completely separate from the one that you created earlier. So this can be a completely different username if you want to keep everything separated. The password it does have some strict requirements for WordPress, so I will just recommend using the password that is generated for you. But make sure you write it down so that you don't forget it later. And when you're ready, you can click the Install WordPress button at the bottom. Now we've finished with the WordPress install, so go ahead and click Login. And here, type in your WordPress username and WordPress password.
And that's basically it. Now WordPress is set up. Um, you can draft a message to create a new blog post. And then if we view this draft, we can also publish it. And one last step that you'll need to do in order to make sure WordPress is visible to other users and not just to the user that's logged in. You'll need to come back to the setup page and in the configuration section, turn on this public access option and then click update setup to apply the change. And now you can use this launch web client button to see the WordPress site and to browse around to the different posts. So I hope that was helpful. And if you would like to know more about Freedombox, please visit freedombox.org. You can also find documentation and so on. Thank you for watching.